Hey everybody, in this video I'll be talking about audio cleanup as it relates to podcast editing. Ideally, every piece of audio we work with will be well recorded in a really nice sounding space, but we all know that that is the dream, not the reality. This makes the audio cleanup process one of the most important for the listener's experience. The most common audio issues we run into when editing podcasts are system noise and reverb. I'll admit right now that I do not feel there is any benefit to doing much more than this. I know there are other editors who go into RX and will manually remove barking dogs, sirens, or other ambient sounds, and there's nothing wrong with that. I offer that level of work, but it's at an additional cost, and so far, no client has felt it was something worth paying more for. So there's a little bit of free market research for you to consider. My workflow has changed quite a bit over the last 18 months. Back then, all my cleanup tasks were handled in Isotope RX's standalone editor. I'm always looking for ways to improve efficiency while being able to provide comparable or better results. The first plugin I found that could replace an RX task was Acon Digital's Deverberate 3. Until earlier this year, I hadn't found any noise reduction plugins I felt could outperform what I could do in RX. Fast forward to today, and I do very little work in the RX editor. It just takes too much time and I have plugins now that provide comparable results non-destructively, some of which are RX plugins like Mouth Declick and Deplosive, and this shaves anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes from my production time for a given episode. So let's jump into RX to see how I would handle four different clips of audio. We're only tackling noise and reverb reduction, and I'll make another video that goes into other common cleanup tasks like mouth noise and plosive soon. If it's already out, you'll see a link somewhere above me, probably over here somewhere. Let's dive in. Here we are in RX. Let's take a listen to this audio clip. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically uh, probably Similar to a lot of people who are doing audio editing, uh, I got in. I've been a musician for a really long time. As we can hear, there's a lot of noise, but some kind of gate is being applied to address the noise in between words. But it's left all of that noise when he's talking. Working on a piece of audio like this is challenging because we can't get a really good noise profile because the gating gets in the way of that. Let's take a look at how I'd approach this. Even though a lot of the noise is gated, we'll start by getting a noise profile. We'll teach it. Now let's apply it. Uh, at some point, so we've got a good sample for at least that section. Let's render it out. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically... Uh, so as we can see, it did nothing for when he's talking. Let's try voice denoise, see how that works. And we'll just render out a short section. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is... That did not make enough of an improvement. So we're going to have to go in to the gaps in between words to try to piece together a good, usable noise profile. When I do this, we want to make sure we're not capturing breaths. This looks like it could be a breath right here. Probably similar to a lot of people. 
but since it's gated, it is a little more challenging to determine what is a breath and what's just noise in between words. So for this, I'll use the time selection tool, command key R, To make multiple selections, we'll hold down the shift key while we're making the making additional selections. And here I'm just looking for noise in between words. The orange stuff is signal, but noise is shown more as this. I'm not sure how you want to describe this but this is what noise looks like. And we can see we have a good amount of horizontal noise, so I want to make sure I'm getting good profiles of that. Ideally, we want to capture as many frequencies as we can. And with the way that gate, you could hear it slowly release. We want to make sure we're getting some good spots where the, where the noise is louder. Not just in these sections where you're hearing the gate release. So I'm hoping we've got a good selection here. So we will teach this. Noise profile is not captured at some frequencies completed. We want to select no for that. And I'll go back to the beginning to select a short section to test this out on. Yeah, sure. Um... Thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically. Let's turn up noisy. We've got some tonal stuff as indicated by the horizontal lines. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically. Sometimes it will take a couple of tries to find the right profile. Since I'm still hearing the same noise, that tells me I didn't get a good enough noise profile. I didn't get enough in between the words. So this time, we'll start by focusing in, in the space between the words. So we're looking at areas like this and this. Not sure what was going on there. It would not let me scroll. That's the first time I've ever run into that kind of a problem. And that's the way it goes whenever you're recording. Things never go as smoothly as you would like. And I will err on the side of caution. So something like this, if I'm not sure if it's noise or word, I will just skip it. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically... Okay, so that's a lot better. So I will now render out the full file. And it is worth taking a few extra minutes to get a really good noise profile because it does make a big difference. So let's listen back. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is... So there's still a little bit of halo at the ends of words. 
let's see if Voicey Noise will take care of it this time. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically... So I think that's probably as good as we're going to get on this one without spending an insane amount of time on it. And honestly, most listeners probably aren't going to be too bothered with it when it sounds like this. So we will render the full file and we'll move on to the next example. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. So there's a, there's a lot of infrastructural scale. So we have a lot of system noise floor. Let's get a profile of this. And since I'm demonstrating, I, I'm working on shorter clips, I'd have a much better place to pull a noise profile from the beginning or end of this file. But for demonstration purposes, I'll just choose this. Bring up spectral denoise again. We'll teach it. I don't like going over about 14 or so on noisy tonal. We can usually get away with running more aggressively without really hearing any artifacts. And if you're not seeing the individual sliders for reduction, just click on this link and it'll break it out to the two sliders. We'll render that out. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. So there's a, there's a lot of infrastructural scaling. So that did a pretty good job on a first pass. It will take a second profile. I'll teach that. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. So there's a, there's a lot of infrastructural scaling that needs to be removed. Then what I try to do is I'll use spectral denoise to get most of the noise out. And if there's anything lingering behind the words, that's what I'll use voice denoise for. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. So there's a, there's a lot of infrastructural scaling that be, needs to be required. And there's still a little bit there. Let's see what happens with the second pass. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. So there's a, there's a lot of infrastructural scaling that be, needs to be required. And there's a lot of patience. I'm not liking that a whole lot, so let's do one last spectral. This time, again, we're looking for the space in between words. Let's try that. Let's back down on it. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. So there's a, there's a lot of infrastructural scaling that be, needs to be required. And there's a lot of patience with the system. And I can see that we've got some plosives, and I heard it. You can always tell plosives. They're these really bright yellow spikes that originate at zero hertz and tend to go to somewhere between two and three hundred. So we could run deplosive. Render that out. And you'll see the two of them more or less disappeared. And there's a lot of patience with the system. People have got to be aware. This is what it sounded like before. And there's a lot of patience with the system. And, you know, people have got to be aware. And there's a lot of patience with the system. And, you know, 
people have got to be aware. And then I'm hearing reverb on this. So there's a there's a lot of infrastructural scaling that be, needs to be required, and there's a lot of patience with the system. And you know, people have got to be aware that there is no money press here. We're just going to focus on this part. Let's bring up dialogue, the reverb. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. So there's a, there's a lot of infrastructural scaling that be, needs to be required. And there's a lot of patience with the system. And, you know. So we're starting to, at this point, sound a little overprocessed. And we start asking ourselves, does this sound better? Or should we go back and redo some of the stuff, maybe with lighter settings? But I think the average person isn't going to be too bothered by this. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. So there's... Compared to what we started out with. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. So there's a, there's a lot of infrastructural scaling that be, needs to be required. And there's a lot of patience. So let's move on to the next clip. It's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of and this one is coming in extremely quiet. We're coming in at negative 30. So just to help, I'll gain this up a little bit. The physics of the global energy system. I don't know anybody who doesn't want a cleaner environment. <clears throat> so we have a ton of noise on this. We've got a ton of noise under 100 hertz and just a ton of noise everywhere. So let's start by getting a noise profile. Teach it. Let's try about 14. Render this out. And I always render really short sections, so I'm not taking a lot of time rendering out the full file only to find out the results aren't what I'm looking for. It's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all. So that did a pretty good job. Let's try a voice noise on top of it to see if that will clean up the rest. It's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders <clears throat> and there's this huge absence of understanding. It sounds like there's a slight reverb on it. Let's see what Dialogue D Reverb does. It's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders, <clears throat> and there's this huge absence of understanding the physics of the global energy system. And I'll add a little more gain to this because every passive spectral, every passive voice denoise, every passive Dialogue D Reverb it reduces the volume so it can be sometimes it sounds like you're getting a better result but it's just getting quieter it's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders <clears throat> and there's this huge absence of understanding so i think dialogue d reverb did help with clarity it's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders <clears throat> and there's this huge absence of understanding the physics of Let's look at our last clip. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there were There's really obvious reverb on this, but there's also sounds like HVAC is running in the background. And I did kind of shoot myself in the foot. I cut this one a little bit too short to really get a good noise profile. So we'll piece one together. Probably back this down to about 10 because we don't have a huge amount of noise on it. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big... 
think we got most of it out. Now let's try dialog D reverb. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there and the problem with anything that has this much reverb, once we take out the reverb, we're left with like the early slapback delay, which then becomes more obvious. We can try a second pass, but usually that doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves. That actually made it sound worse. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves. So here is kind of the results we can get by doing noise and reverb reduction in Rx. So let's move into Hindenburg, where we will start by using some plugins. First, let's listen to the raw audio again. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background. This is the example that had the gated noisy audio. Let's bring up Supertone Clear and see what it does. So we've got three knobs. We don't worry about the middle one. Ambience, which is poorly named, removes the background noise. Voice reverb addresses reverb. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically uh, probably Similar to a lot of people who are doing audio editing, uh, I got in, I've been a musician for a really long time. So that did a pretty good job with a lot of the noise. Let's see if voice denoise can take care of the rest. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically uh, probably Similar to a lot of people who are doing audio editing, uh, I got in, I mean, I've been a musician for a really long time. And uh, at some So in this instance, I feel like I still got a slightly better result in RX, but I don't think either result is going to make enough of a difference that a listener is going to stop listening if I used the plug-in version, which took me a minute to dial in versus the RX version, which probably took me 15 minutes once it would have been fully rendered out. And this kind of shows why I'm showing both ways of doing this kind of work. Let's listen to this example to remember what it sounded like. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. Good amount of noise. We had the plosives, so we'll bring bring in the RXD plosive. We've got clear, and I've loaded up voice denoise just in case. You're scratching through university records. You're scratching through old books. You know, so there's a there's a lot of infrastructural scaling that be, needs to be required. And there's a lot of patience with the system. And, you know, people have got to be aware that there is no money press here. This is not a printing press of carbon certificates. If you've, if somebody's offering you a carbon, a new, a new carbon project, and they're saying that, you know, it's producing credits next. I think we could go either way with voice denoise. If there is any noise, it's not that noticeable. Let's just throw on, throw it on just to see what it sounds like. You're scratching through university records, you're scratching through old books, you know. So there's a, there's a lot of infrastructural scaling that be, needs to be required. And there's a lot of patience with the system. And, you know, people have got to be aware that there is no money press here. This is not a printing press of carbon certificates. If, you've, if somebody's offering... So voice denoise does make a subtle difference. But again, I don't think someone will stop listening if you use it or if you don't. But in this instance, I got as good a results or better results and a lot less time using these plugins than I did in RX. 
So let's move on to the next example. It's one of the most fascinating ones because there this is the one that had a ton of background noise and came in really quiet since Hindenburg auto levels upon import were up at negative 21 LUFs. Let's bring up clear first and address the noise. It's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders <clears throat> and there's this huge absence of understanding the physics. Of now that we've got the noise out of the way, we can again more clearly hear how much reverb is there. We'll start with clear. The global energy system. I don't know anybody who doesn't want a cleaner environment <clears throat> and I don't know anybody who doesn't want reliable, affordable energy. Those two have to compete for capital and also for... So even with voice reverb maxed out, I'm still hearing a good amount of reverb. So let's try bringing in a con digital deverberate. We'll reset voice reverb, see how a con digital deverberate handles this. It's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders, <clears throat> and there's this huge absence of understanding the physics of the global energy system. I don't know anybody who doesn't want a cleaner environment, <clears throat> and I don't know anybody who doesn't want reliable, affordable energy. Those two have to compete. For I like to stick around negative 10 dB on deverberate. Maybe I'll go up to 12 to 15. I find that as we go much past there, we start increasing the artifacts. So I'll try to do two more subtle passes. So let's mix in some reverb reduction in clear. The most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders, <clears throat> and there's this huge absence of understanding the physics of the global energy system. I don't know anybody who doesn't want a cleaner environment, <clears throat> and I don't know anybody who doesn't want Again, I feel like we got as good a result or better with this approach. And let's go to our last clip. We were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves. And this is why a guest using a condenser microphone in a large, untreated office is such a bad idea. and causes a lot of work for us because this is what it sounds like. So let's bring up clear first to see how it does. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get closer to protecting applications and APIs by being directly in those things. Rather so that's what it sounds like with voice reverb maxed. Let's reset that. We'll see how Deverberate handles it. We were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get... Now we'll bring in Clear to do a final pass with the reverb. We were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get closer to protecting applications and APIs by being directly in those things rather than around them. So we started a company. Uh, we built uh, quite a bit of notoriety. We So I think here we're getting a pretty good balance. Let's try maxing it out real quick. Uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market. So here, somewhere around negative 16 dB plus the negative 10 and deverberate. And I think we've got a pretty good result. I find it sounds a lot better than what we were getting with just RX. And this kind of shows why it's important to have a number of tools for noise and reverb reduction. Because sometimes one will work when another won't. Now that I've gone through these examples, I'm sure you can probably see why I'm moving away from the RX editor. It's not just for workflow and efficiency. RX has gone from an industry standard in audio cleanup to falling behind the new AI and machine learning plugins that have been hitting the market this year. 
and they haven't helped themselves by moving to ho-hum annual upgrades since being bought out by Native Instruments. Last year, I would have recommended RX Advance to anyone editing for clients. These days, I think RX Standard is all we need, and I feel that if RX doesn't up their game soon, it won't be needed at all by most podcast editors. So what about you? How do you work when cleaning up audio? Do you use RX? Do you use plugins? Do you use a combination of the two? Do you feel like RX is losing this race? Leave your thoughts below and I'll talk to you next time.